as a wise man once said, it's rudimentary. <laughs> Let's go and check out the Peterbilt 389 from John Ruda, guys. It's going to be fun. Hey guys, Clumsy here. Welcome back to ATS and welcome to John Ruda's P389 glider. I finally bit the bullet and bought this as I was craving for a different truck and I have heard stellar reviews from other people who bought this. So for those who are not familiar, John Ruda is a very prominent member of the community. He makes payware mods that are pretty reasonable in price in my opinion. I actually have three of his trucks now. This is my latest purchase. This is 25 USD and in this video we will be checking out the different config options, the uh, different um, styles yeah, and we'll do a short test drive at the maybe around second part of the video. So there should be chapters, timestamps so you can jump to each one if you wish to do so. Anyway, first things first. Let me give you a tour of the interior. This is how that interior looks. And yes, you have that humongous shifter. Apparently that's a thing here in the US or in some truckers at least. Full compatibility with cabin accessories, sessel accessories, all accessories. Yeah, there is a uh, um, uh, kilometer per hour indication. So if you're driving in Canada like I am right now in Pro Mods Canada, you'll fit right in. And yeah, it just looks very nice. But uh, yes, we'll go into the detail on what the different config options are. Let's do just that. Let's go to the vehicle browser, truck browser. And first things first, let's go and check out, as I always like to do, check out the triangle count because it gives us an indication of how the performance will be. Right? So let's go and check out the Peterbilt 389. So this is the one from SES. So take a look not only at the triangle count just here, DC, 1 million triangles, right? So default SES, 1 million. And look at how that looks compared with the 389 glider from John Ruda, that guy. It is a lot heavier in the terms of triangles, 7 million triangles there. So you might need a more powerful PC. So that's a heads up. But in terms of the looks, you can already see the uh, difference in the the modeling. This definitely looks like a much higher quality model and that reflects in the number of triangles. Yeah, smoother edges, more rounded edges. This one is pretty good, okay-ish. But not stellar. So you really are paying for that additional look and feel. Yeah. Even more so, if you look in the interior here, we have 12 million triangles. So yes, can be heavy on the frames there and we'll test it out later. 12 million versus if you look at the default 389, 2 million. But look at the interior quality. This is SCS guys. This is the default textures from, uh, these are the default textures from SCS. They're okay, right? But yeah, you can see like the, the polygons, the edges of the uh, seats, for example. And the textures aren't very crisp, some they're somewhat blurred. If you compare that with the 389 from John Ruda. Yeah, it's as rounded as can be. And the, the dials are just super crisp. So yes, you really pay for that. You get what you pay for in both the money and in the triangles, I think, it seems. Anyway, so uh, maybe last comparison. How does it compare in triangle counts versus other John Ruda trucks? Most of John Ruda's trucks are like this because he he has a... I think he has a specific modeler who takes care of the 3D models. And that modeler does not really do it for the game, like for game point of view. So that's why the number of triangles is pretty high in normal cases. But if your PC can handle it, then it will be great. So in comparison, the Freightliner Classic XL from him, 6 million. The W900 from him, 5 million. 
the 3897 million so more or less in the same ballpark range right interior is 12 million double 900 from him is 12 million as well and the classic xl is 11 10 11 million but based on experience the classic xl has the least fps in real time so the triangle count does not tell the full story guys there are other optimizations in play maybe something like when it comes to the mirrors when the mirrors are rendered and whatnot other performance considerations not only triangle count so maybe in the future i might actually make a video comparing those if i get enough time we'll see okay anyway let's go and check out focus now on the actual config options of the 389 glider let's turn off the mini console there so we have a high roof and a flat top variant and then when it comes to the chassis you have a 6x4 or a low version or you can have a long frame right here or a low long frame so all 6x4s but different frame sizes yeah you have engines i'm not very particular about the engine because for me personally i use zmod sounds anyway in particular this one i'm driving the one we'll be driving in a few minutes will be the cummins n14 from zmod that one i think or it's this one yeah the 500 horsepower one Transmission's pretty standard, 18-speed Eaton Fuller transmission. No retarder by default, very American. And then in terms of the interior here, you can have like a gray or a brown colored interior. Depends on your taste. We'll go back there in a bit. But in terms of paint jobs, you have lots. Oh, there's actually have a paintable skin here. That's nice. It's like if you're the creative type, you can do your own. There are the custom colors and as always with all John Ruda trucks you have a lot of choices in here so let me just scroll through them 2020 special this is the one I'm using Canada 150 fits perfectly right super sleek and then you can have like a paintable version right and those different uh, variants different curves different layouts but let me just go through them quickly yeah so up to you depending on your creative juices this one i really like maybe if when when i leave canada go back to the us i will switch to this one i like the simplicity of it let's keep that for now now in terms of what you can do you can see so many dots here yes yeah where do we start i have no idea let's start here the grill very nice Lots of different options, different grill types, horizontal, vertical, paint, or chrome. This one is my favorite, the Pride and Glass version. I guess that's the top of the line version because if you look here, and if it's scattered across the different parts of the truck, but you have these like Pride and Glass badge, like that. You also have something like that in the interior. So I guess that's like their top of the line variant, I imagine. Bug deflector, why not? You can also change the grill here if you're that painted kind of guy. But for me, with American trucks, I really like the chrome. I think the chrome fits very well. Headlights, so many options in here. Chrome, dark chrome, black mask chrome. And the lights are also very different. And they are compatible with 140. That's the bigger thing there because as you guys might know, with the 140 update, it broke all the lights from the old mods. So the modders have to adjust that's also one good thing about John Ruda's mods. You buy it once and you get updates for free. And it's not just like a fake update, he really updates them. As a matter of fact, the W900 from him is going to receive a massive update soon. I'm going to look forward to that. And you basically just purchase it once and get lifetime updates. And yes, he doesn't stop updating them from the looks of it. Right, so lots of different options. You even have like a chrome or paint here. You can add some blinker lights on that bottom, on that finish. Yeah, so you can have something like that. That one, that other dot, that other headlight is for the high beam. <clears throat> yes, so you have different oversized options. 
if you're in the mood for some special transport maybe or some heavy hauling oh yeah chromy bits yeah you can see here actually with version 3 he adds uh, a lot of different new parts so that's how it looks with the free updates for me personally i like the bendy one this one i like with a little bit of bend there the super box type flat one like this yeah maybe but just my personal taste i really like the one with the curve like that one and then you can add so many lights and uh and plates depending on you what you wish oh that's where you put the plate i was looking for this because there was an Ontario license plate. Yeah, that one. So you can put one in the middle like so. And then on the other edges, I don't know how you usually do that, but you can put some lights in here. Depending on how flashy you want it. Hmm. OCD. <laughs> Those with OCD are probably getting triggered right now. But <laughs> Bear with me, okay? Bear with me. Oh, there you go. Case in point, you have a pride and class version with the more chromey bits. More chrome, more fun. And if you're the type of guy who likes the front mirrors, then that will do for you. Although with John Ruda's trucks, I highly recommend against it because you, your performance will get impacted enough already that uh, adding mirrors to the mix will make it even worse, I think. I'd like to highlight that point, so let me show you. If I turn on the mini console again, look at the number of triangles, guys. Went up to 16 million, almost 16 million because of those mirrors. If we remove those mirrors in here, show you. If I can find the dots at least. Uh, that one. So if I remove the right, we go down to 13 or 14. And if I remove that one, we go back to 12. Yeah, so the mirrors really are a huge... Uh, uh, performance eater how about this one if I remove this one oh yeah that got down to 10 million so less mirrors more FPS basically that's the the basic concept okay let's see what there are these old school mirrors these ones mostly same number of triangles okay let's go back out though what else can we see? So many more, guys. So many more. You can add so many of these different lights. I really like this. They look very classy. They're not over the top. Just adding an accessory, some bling without really going overboard. But yes, as always, it depends on your taste. And you can even have like those lights there by the filter clear or not i really like the clear versions they're very like when they're not lit up they're very subtle and then when they light up they add a bit of extravagance but not too much not over the top in my opinion chrome and paint that will be a trend here you'll see that in many of these parts chrome and paint possibilities different stacks as well so yeah Depends on how creative you are, how uh, playful you are in the mood, you can go and mix and match. And here you can even put your own logo. I think there is an open definition. Uh, you can change this file and then it will put your logo in there. I think I did that on sec. Um, should I? It might reset things, but okay, just for just for illustration if i go here i think i did that for his freightliner classic so i modified the fi file in the freightliner classic and uh, got my own logo in there if i can find it um, might be hard to find now though oh that one see put my logo in there so a similar thing you'll just have to go and dig through some files inside the the SES files I think in the open definition file that comes with the package and uh, you get uh, you edit it with paint.net or other photo editing apps and then you can replace that with your own right what else <clears throat> you can have square or rounded air horns can have a spoiler in here though I think if you do that the only compatible one is the square 
can add some lights very nice looking lights here rounded or square or you can even have like a light bar more modern look i guess particularly like this one personally there's also an interior light i haven't tried it yet we'll try it later if you can see that with the new lighting antenna can be put in antennae is that the plural of it you can have that on both sides just uh, yeah so many different options in here so if you're the type who likes to dress up pimp up your truck this might actually be very good for you different mud flaps as well what is that right in glass ah yes even the chromey bits here there are different variants so yes you can have chrome or paint some with LED lights, a low version, custom. This is the one I like, super sleek look. Is there like a pride and class kind of thing? Not really. But yeah, so many different options you can choose from here. And then even the steps are varied. Custom chrome. I like the custom chrome ones. I think those are a recent addition. Roman paint. Yeah, it says new in 3.0, the custom parts, the custom chrome parts. So many different options, guys. Even here. Suspension cap. That guy? I guess. I'm not really familiar with it. You guys might be able to configure this better than I can. And then even the cables, you can have the connections right down there, look more subtle, not exposed. Very nice. Paint, standard. This one you can change. These ones too. Oh, that's nice. That's sleek. There's a chrome finish at the bottom of the flap. And with John Ruda's trucks, you always have these... Uh, specialized tires he it comes with this package tires and wheel set you can see john ruda different kinds there you can have like a chrome version or kenworth or whatnot modern classic and the the tires look very sleek goodyear tires that are properly black and not gray something we definitely want okay Right in class, that's the one we tried a while ago. Here, chrome or paint covering. A rear bar. Does that light up? It doesn't show here, I think. What else? Up to you. How you can go and... Oh, you can even have a bottom light. One of those fancy lights on the undercarriage. And then you can open them either when you trigger the beacons or when you turn on the parking light very nice option i actually missed that i didn't have that in my truck fancy fenders i like the simple ones this one cool you guys good with the exterior anyway i'll let you explore that if you decide on to get it on your own but yeah that's why it's payware because of all these stuff and all the updates <clears throat> refer to my payware discussion <laughs> along those lines uh, sun visors also multiple options but i'm not a huge fan of huge sun visors i like them as little as possible so they don't obstruct my view because i'll be spending my most of my time here in the interior oh and by the way you can actually lie on your bed and rest pretty cool right even this one you can change there's a low quality and a high quality version i don't know why I don't know why that is, but uh, maybe it saves up on performance. I have no idea. It's pretty cool though to have an option like that. <clears throat> I'm stuck here now though. Yeah, you have to go out and in to get back in like this. Now, why do we have 13.5 million now? Uh, did I not remove that? There we go. That's 11. Okay, good. 
So yeah. Yeah, it's compatible with the new cabin accessories DLC from ATS. So that's my favorite uh, GPS thing there. Here you can cover the GPS with uh, something like that. So you don't have multiple GPS devices. So really well thought out. And each part is compatible with each, uh, with each other accessory. So even this one, like, right? The no clipping one or whatsoever. Really well thought of. That's nice. You can have hanging toys here. You can have hanging uh, stuff in the glass. I'm not really a fan of that. It's compatible with Sizzle's accessories. Yeah. You can put something here like a, a bubble head or something. That can work as well. Here we have a pride and glass thing again. Yeah, very sleek look. And if you're not a fan of the wooden textures here, no worries. You have plenty of other options. Like so. I like that one. It's very sleek. Or a carbon fiber one. Yeah, that can work. Now with this one, 138 and 139. I guess that's the one you choose. I was hoping for something, a, a, some, some more options here. So I'm not a huge fan of the default Peterbilt steering wheel look. It looks pretty deformed, right? Not really uh, it's symmetrical, but kind of nice too. That one kind of fits better. But yeah, at least it's compatible with the SCI DLC. Steering Creations, is it? Uh, I, I forgot the company name, but it's a DLC that you can purchase from ATS and it's compatible here. So yes, other accessories are also there. You can even change the carpeting, even put in a wooden floor there looks slippery though but if, if that's your thing i won't judge shifter that's the guy that's the main star of the show <laughs> cannot have it any other way over here you can put in the peterbilt logo even a pride and class uh, stitching there and even change the seat all right even that one totally different look but still has that logo and then here you can even have those magnets from the new cabin accessories dlc but yes so many different details pillows stuff here and hanging toy there uh guitar maybe something like that right super cool so yes so many different options and compatibility with different mods this is why z mod supports the truck natively i guess he can he knows the the value of these trucks as well right so if you're not totally allergic to payware stuff this might be a very good truck to try out anyway let's go and proceed let's go and take this thing for a test drive I have the cummins n14 engine here as i mentioned One huge watch out. The indicators are a bit hard to find. I had trouble in that in the stream because in the Peterbilt 389, I think they're really at the bottom, even the, in, in the SCS variant. But here in this truck, it's even more so. By default, the steering wheel is like that. And you would have no idea. You would think, huh, oh, it's broken. Steering wheel, steering indicator doesn't show. But yes, you have to lower the wheel like so. So you see that bar there. But you have to tweak it a bit so that it doesn't cover your other uh, dials like it does in mine now. So you have to continuously tweak well until you get the magic combination for me. I think I get it that way. Just to get, get, get a bit off indication in there <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> yes it's a tricky thing but the mirrors the mirrors are great i think the old mirrors are good in the fov department these are the old mirrors the modern ones the fov is not very nice uh that might need a bit of improvement let's get in here and show you so that's the no i'm in a different truck uh that is the yeah, that's the FOV for the new mirror. I think it's a bit like a bit wide. The FOV, the field of view on the old mirror, on the old style here, that looks more realistic. 
narrower so it's very easy to park you have that proper sense of distance so i recommend choosing this one yeah maybe he'll update that eventually but for now i recommend sticking with the old style and uh, who was it some some guys pointed out that nice detail objects in the mirror are closer than they appear all right off we go yeah nice visibility even when i'm reversing i hardly need to zoom in here because the visibility on the mirrors are very nice as well I removed the side mirror I have no hood mirrors and I removed the side mirror just to really save up on FPS yeah, but with this truck I, I don't reach 120 FPS I'll be happy if I reach 60 let's have a look at the FPS numbers yeah around 60s let's keep that on in the meantime just so you can see What's interesting is my the bottleneck for me at the moment is seems to be like CPU related. If you look at my GPU utilization, it's actually below, way below, only at fifty percent more or less. Let's see once we get on the highway if that gets better. But yeah, it looks like the CPU is the one that's stopping out. One of the threads is maxing out. We'll see how that changes as we get on the highway and less objects are loaded. Good. It's going to be a very short trip, guys. I think around 50 miles only. Yeah, you can already see the destination. Just hopping on to the next city. I think it's uh, it's this is in Pro Mods Canada. Coquitlam is where we're going from Abbotsford to Coquitlam, I think, if I remember correctly. Yeah, very nice, very sleek ride. Physics on the cabin seems spot on, it really feels stable even at higher speeds. There we go, FPS is starting to come up now, and the GPU is starting to be able to stretch its legs. But yes, looks like a lot of CPU bottlenecks all throughout still. Anyway, alright. So let me see, maybe in the future I can do some sort of comparison with his other trucks and SES trucks. We'll see. Now if I don't get lost on these roads, it's going to be a very quick video. But if I get lost, like I almost did there, it's going to be a long roundabout route. Why did I need to go there? Oh yes, because there's actually an exit here. Almost missed it. There you go. Pocket lab. Aside from the performance impact, if your PC can handle it, then I highly recommend this. For me personally, the price is more than worth the the experience you get with the different config options and just the feel of it. You know, that premium feel of the truck. Couple that with Z mod sounds, you're golden. But yes, it, it really you really have to have a more powerful PC than usual. So I'm not sure though if he, it would be great if he had like a, a free trial, right? Just to check if your PC can handle it, but I don't think there is such a thing. Maybe you can try and make a deal with him and see what if you guys can come on to an agreement. That's beautiful. We're here? Is it that fast? Jake break all the way. There we go. So 
Yeah, performance is not bad. It's not going to be stellar. Like in default trucks, I sometimes can reach up to maybe 100 FPS, 120 if we're not in the city. But yes, you won't be getting that with John Ruta's trucks because the models are very heavy. They are very detailed and you can see them, you can see the effect if you compare that with normal uh, basic uh, models, but they are not optimized. Yeah, so it's it looks good but it's going to hurt a bit <laughs> but if your system can handle it go ahead it's going to be great <clears throat> so yes uh, look forward to more episodes more videos with this truck i'll definitely be driving this more and when john ruda's w900 comes out is that us which lane is that? Why is it facing me? I guess that was supposedly us. I was waiting for like left turn signal there. But then again, I guess I can also turn left here if there's no one. Or not. I thought that was supported. Okay. Never mind. So yes, I'll be driving this more and when the W900 updates from John Ruda comes out. I will definitely be switching to that one and I'll be trying out the updates because I'm a huge fan of the W900 as well. And yes, initially I was thinking like why would you need like a 389 from in the pay, a payware mod at that when you already have a, a W900 and a 389 in SES. But yes, if you compare the dots that they show, the config options and the look, the overall look, compare the default with what you just saw here in this video yeah you will you probably will realize it on your own like, oh that's why okay <laughs> but yes this is really for the oh my goodness raw mods canada yeah it looks like we'll have to be a bit creative with the reversing here we'll see how we can work it out but yeah, I would say this truck, John Ruta's trucks in general, are for the more advanced users, more hardcore users maybe. People who are looking for more, like they're happy with ATS, but they want more. And the, the default offerings, even the mods that are available are not cutting it. So they're starting to look into payware stuff. This is definitely somewhere I'd start looking into. John Ruda so far has been very easy to work with. I just shoot him an email. He replies within the same day. He... I ask how much the truck is. He tells how much and what the payment options are. Stuff like that. And then a few minutes later, I have it. Easy as that. And then... I follow him in Facebook, so whenever there are updates, I know already, and I can download them using the same link. Easy, easy. Can't remember when I first bought his uh, Classic XL, but yeah, no regrets since the Classic XL is my favorite ATS truck. This 389 is fast becoming fast catching up because it's just yeah, the visibility look at this right so easy to park no barriers just in the field of view is perfect it looks great and it's very functional so it's hard not to become a favorite with this truck but uh, yeah it's it's a hard choice between this one and the classic i think the classic wins for me by a very narrow margin but not by much just for bias on how it looks but this truck definitely will be a top in the list of many people those are the flares high beams yeah very nice fully compatible with 140 no funky lighting no excessive lighting so John Ruda got his hands on it already and uh, yes even during the beta
140 beta phase, like probably around two or three weeks after the beta released in 140 with the lighting updates, John Ruda already released his uh, his updated versions. So when 140 came live, it was like, you don't need to do anything because it's my mods have been compatible since like three weeks ago, something like that. So yeah, very nice, very fast updates. Highly recommend it. Anyway, you guys let me know in the comments. I know some people will not like the pay mod, so no worries there. I respect your decision, but for those who are into it, this might be a worthy candidate in your fleet. So let me know if you decide to buy it. Let me know if you decide not to, but let me know regardless. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Looking forward to your comments and uh, look forward to more videos with this one. Clumsy Trucking, guys. Bye-bye. Catch you soon. Thank you.